Boom! Welcome back to Mind Pump. In this episode, we talk about why the exercises you suck at are probably the exercises you should be doing. Oh, my leg. And we also talk about the sad state of men today. Are you one of those guys? I hope not. Then in the second half of this episode, we answer four questions from our Mind Pump Media Instagram account. Questions like, are workouts in a sauna good, bad, or just plain stupid? Also, what's the best way for a woman to get lean and muscular arms without getting too bulky? Finally, do you love Mind Pump but find that you just can't keep up with all the content we pump out? Well, we have the answer for you. It's called Mind Pump Clips. You can find it right here on YouTube at Mind Pump Clips. <laughs> Easy enough. All right, enjoy the show. Here's a trick to get fast strength and muscle gains. Pick an exercise you suck at, practice it, and get good at it. You'll get those newbie gains again, like you did when you first started working out. But I don't want to. It's I love hard. this advice. Yeah. This is, like some, this is some of my favorite advice to give because I think that... I don't care how long you've been lifting for. I think everybody is guilty of gravitating towards the exercises that you love doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we all do. I, I know I know you guys are all guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. You get in a routine. You have a few exercises you love to do. They're always in the rotation. And by the way, some of them should be, right? Like, I do think there's some movements that are such high skill and such high return that they should be in your routine most of the time. Yep. Mm -hmm. But then there's then there's a another, you know, I don't know, half or more than half of exercises that we choose from that I think we still get stuck in in a in a handful of the same ones all the time and just simply changing the exercise up uh, will stimulate uh, a, a new response to the body that you're that you're not used to. Yeah, immediately uh anytime anybody mentions front squat, I'm like, "Ah, Okay, now I got to program that in for mm. at least a month or so because it's just one of those I just conveniently kind of push aside because it's it's really challenging. It's, it's a hard, hard one. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why. <laughs> super hard one. It's that and like pull-ups. Like I'm always like I find myself just conveniently avoiding it uh, and and not to, including my in my like regular practice of working out. But yeah, that that's more what it is. I think it's more that there's exercises that we tend to avoid because we suck at them. Yeah, they're hard. We don't do them well. Maybe we're not as strong at them, so we tend to avoid doing them because I don't want anybody to see that I'm not using as much weight or whatever. And the <clears throat> the interesting thing is, if you pick those exercises, do the one that you suck at, and say to yourself, "Okay, for the next sixty days, my goal is to get really good at like, pull ups." For example, let's say you suck at pull ups. I'm going to get really good at pull ups, or maybe it's dips, or maybe it's push ups, or maybe it's a windmill or anything. Right? I'm going to get really good at this exercise I suck at. Yeah. And through that process, you tap into those newbie gains that you got when you first started working out where you got stronger every single workout. Mm -hmm. And it's because you probably suck at the exercise because you probably don't have the what the CNS doesn't, you know, work with it properly, don't have the right skill for it. So that that process of learning it, man, gives you those quick gains. What what are what are some Justin named some of his, right? Pull ups, front squats. Yeah, what are some biggest. what are some of yours? I, I know we all know. Like there's yeah. movements that like you hear and you're like, ah, yeah. I haven't done that in a while. I need to do that. That's such a valuable exercise. Why haven't I done that? Oh, right? oh, oh, what front, are yours? Front, he hit front squats. That's mine. Really? I used to be. I feel like you're pretty good about that. No, yeah. I don't. Really? Do, not, no. You know, when I do them, I can get really strong at them. And then I don't do them for a long ass time. Because I feel like when I, when I, because I obviously we see, I don't, we don't see every workout that we each do, but I, I see uh, most of what you guys do. And I feel like you're probably the best with, with doing front squats. Oh, I haven't done them in a long mm -hmm. time. Really? Yeah. You know, I just saw, you know, on Facebook, how it shows you like memories or whatever. I just saw one from 10 years ago, and I did a front squat with Yeah, but it hasn't been that long. I've seen you do front no, squats. No, 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 no. I know that. I know that. <laughs> so, so, okay, front squats. Saw, what saw, else? Uh, what else? Let me think. Uh, what, what else? else? What else? Do Bulgarians? I see? Are you pretty consistent? Yeah, no, that's a good one. That's yeah. a good one that I tend to That's on, That's do on much. my list. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bulgarians are one that uh, I avoided forever. Then I went on a kick getting really good at it. Oh, them. you saw know what? huge gains from them, and then I still have to remind myself to return. You know to what them. I don't do a lot of at all? Uh, <clears throat> hang cleans or um, a high pull. I did them the other day, uh, and, mm -hmm. I'll, and I could feel them in my traps and my upper back. I'm like, oh, man, I could get really – because what happens when you start with an exercise you suck at is you can't go very heavy. Mm -hmm. But then you practice it, and the strength gains go up really, really quick. So I know I can get strong – yeah, but that's a, that's a, that's kind of a unique one. Like, like when you think of like, like you mean common ones? Uh, yeah, no, or just like what we would consider, say, top twenty yeah. exercises. Like it should be in the rotation, right? Exactly. But. Like just, I, I agree. Like front squat has to be up there in the top twenty to twenty five. Yeah, right up there. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So front squat has to be there. Bulgarian, I would say, has yeah. to has to be up there. Pull up that you you said pull up. You don't do like yeah. regular pull, yeah, pull up would be up there. Me. Like 
ones that are Maybe missing from like the, the core, like really, what are you, what do you probably neglect or have to mm. remind yourself like, Oh, I need to do more of those. Bulgarians would be mine for sure. I'm, 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 I, I tend to move away from that. I front squats. Maybe I would, I would say that's, I'm up there with They're that. Just so hard. <laughs> that's yeah, is. well, that's the one. That's one of the ones that hurt me last because I went heavy. I was oh, feeling yeah. good, Too fast. yeah, and and it, my my core, uh, you know, or it was my my like my obliques, or I st- felt like I pulled a rib. Remember mm-hmm, when I was telling mm-hmm. you about that? So it was my serratus, right? That was like oh, core work in general. I would throw that in there. I mean, mainly like crunch and Abs. like sit ups, but yeah, because I do like more rotational stuff, just because I want to be intentional with that. But I do less ab specific work. Yeah, I would say I'm with you on that. Sal's the best at that. I, I always catch you doing your ball crunches and doing your, your oh, you know, windmills. I haven't done those in a while. And I remember when I first tried doing them with you guys, I couldn't do one with no weight. Remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, I do. I was yeah. like, my body's not, why doesn't it want to move <laughs> like this? do this. <laughs> and you got, and Justin was really good at them. And I was like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. And then I went on a kick at practicing them and doing them. And I got really good at, my deadlifts felt really stable from it. Mm-hmm. I haven't done them in so long. That's why I got into them. Cause I, I kept like hurting my QL and it was definitely one of those things I had to like, I had to be intentional about it so that way I built some strength stability there. Yeah. It was always I mean you guys you've been talking about the sled a lot. That's caught me back yeah. back into yeah. like, Have you done like, them now? Yeah. Regularly? You know, and I just it's it, again, it's one of those ones I know and you, just you talking about it makes you go, "Oh, you know what? It's it's been a while since it's been in my routine." So You know what? There's a difference though between throwing exercises in here and there. I do pretty good at like throwing stuff in. What I'm talking about is picking one of these that I throw in. I mean, like, I'm going to do it consistently. No, and get good at it. Yes. I agree. Big no, difference. That's what I'm talking about, too. Like, yeah, you, like intermittently, I haven't, I haven't, you intermittently throwing a Bulgarian squad in one time. And then it's going, not the same. And then like, going right back to what you're doing. No, it's like, Oh, okay. I got one. Single leg deadlifts. That uh, one. That's one that I, have, I haven't ever really said, let's see if I can get really strong at this exercise. Because I tend to go to my bilateral. Remember when I went on that kick? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I actually, it wasn't that long ago. I tried to even realize like, oh shit, I need to go back to doing that. You got to a point where you were using 100 pound dumbbells. And I was doing it from the kneeling barefoot position. Oh, remember, I was like cleaning it up to your I would, chest too? I would snap. Remember, I have it in my Instagram. I would snap up off my knees into a single pistol, like a single pistol position. Yeah. And then I would hinge over and deadlift the dumbbells up with hundred pound dumbbells. And I got to a place where I could do that pretty easy. And so I do that the other day. I was all over the place. I was like, oh boy, I need this in my life. You know what? Just thinking back now, uh, you know, I I did do this with one exercise in particular. You guys remember when I went on a kick for, with hip thrusts? Yes. And I was like, let's see. Oh, do I? Yeah. Yes. I remember. It's all wink. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You guys remember the results, right? Right. You guys were all, no wonder you Juicy were so, Sal, dude. They were so nice to me yeah. back when I was doing that. No, I, I went on a kick because I was like, okay, I'm going to do- good games after a podcast. I gonna, <laughs> broke your hand on that stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm going to do these for a little while, see how strong I can get, and then yeah. see what the carryover is. Yeah. And so I did. I did hip thrusts once or twice a week for a while. I got up to like, I don't remember how much, I 600 pounds or something ridiculous. And man, I got strong and deadlifts. I could feel it in my squats. And I haven't done them in a while. So maybe I'll, I'll pick that. But it's fun. It's fun because you, you pick an exercise that- you really don't do often and then just make it a goal for like the next month or two. I'm going to mm-hmm. get really strong at this lift and I'll keep doing my other stuff, but this is the focus right now. You know what it is for me? Dips. Mm. Oh yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right now my goal, I, I've today, I just did, um, what did I strap around hundred pounds? I put, I did hundred pounds around my waist and I was doing uh, doubles, uh, with dips Nice. because I've been doing them regularly and building my strength up. Yeah. So, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a hack. It really is a hack. No, it's a, it's a huge hack. And, and for people that have been lifting for a long time, it's just a, a, a great way to, to break up the monotony of all, doing the same yeah. stuff all the time. And so yeah. it's like, you know what? It's like, I'm going to just going to pick an exercise that I know I suck at, that I know I'm not very good, but I know has a lot of value and I'm just going to insert it into a routine. And I, I, what I like about that too is like, I don't care if you're following a mass program, you're following somebody else's program. You can easily do this and just pull out something that's not in there that you know that you haven't done in a long time, mm-hmm. insert it in the muscle group or whatever, and just make it a goal that you're going to progress it and get good at it. Speaking of yep. workouts, uh, so, you know, we, all of us have been experimenting with this like, you know, maps 15 types type programming or methodology, right? Now we're all more advanced. So our workouts are more like 20 to 25 minutes. Sometimes it'll take me 30 minutes just because I'll do longer rest periods. But usually what the workouts look like is like one compound lift and one or two single joint lifts or two compound lifts or something like that. And, I, mm-hmm. and every day, right? Yeah, I'm doing right. it every day. Today, I'm like, let me just test out because typically the intensity on this is moderate high. I'm not maxing out because I'm doing it so frequently, right? But today I'm like, let me test out 
the strength. Let's see, let's see if how this is working because I can feel I feel good. I feel like my joints are good. I'm feeling strong. And I went in there and I ripped 515 off the floor like nothing. It felt smooth. It I like, felt it like it felt smooth. Huh? I pulled it up like it was like it was nothing. It felt I, I probably could go 550, 560, I think. And that's from training with this kind of short daily you know, oh, I methodology. Think you could easily, from the way it came up, it looked like you could have easily done that. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see. Where, when was the last time you really tested your daily? daily that, I mean, that's the, I haven't gone over 500 pounds in a long time just because it's, you know, at, at some point it's like, could, should I keep doing that? <laughs> but, you know, the young man ego still lives inside me. <laughs> so, but hey, I did it and I felt really good. And hey, kudos to me. I'm going to pat myself on the back. I didn't go heavier. Cause it did come up fast, <laughs> and in my head I was like, "Hmm, that's yeah, another." There is some restraint there, after <laughs> yeah, all, right? Yeah. yeah. Dude. What's up, everybody? Here's the giveaway: Maps 15 minutes. It's the new Maps workout program. Includes the advanced version, which is about 20 to 25 minutes long. It's an everyday workout. You work out for a little every day, get better results than if you free work out for a lot, but not every day. No joke. The science support this. It's a great program. You can get it for free. Here's how you win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section that you got free access to Maps 15 Minutes. Also, because this program is brand new and we're just launching it, we have three days left for, this, for the launch sale. So right now you can get it for $20 off, plus you can get two free eBooks, The Power of Sleep and The Occlusion Training Guide, all included in the next three days. After that, it goes up to retail and you don't get those eBooks. So if you're interested, go to maps15minutes.com and then use the code 15 special for the discount plus the free eBooks. All right, here comes the show. You know, speaking of intensity, you just you just reminded me of something that I wanted to bring up on the show because it, it it bothers me. It annoys me. You know what I don't like? Like somebody somebody shared, tagged me in a Jordan Shallow video where Jordan was, it looked like he was coaching other coaches. And he was basically coaching about intensity. And he had, it was a great little video of him like making the point of like how just most people don't even know what failure is. Mm -hmm. Most people don't even even get close to that. And he was encouraging his uh, you know, people to like when you're on like a hack squad or a machine leg press, he's like, you know, you you push to that place. He's like, get, get to that place. So the, the how low of risk you have on a machine like that, sure. and and a client doesn't even know how to get chained to failure. Blah blah blah. Whatever. So, anyways, my point in bringing that up is that what I get so annoyed about is that, and it's always a, it's always another trainer or coach, and I and I always feel like what I don't feel like it's, it's always people too that have listened to us for a long time and heard us communicate this. I feel like a hundred times. And I, it's like, they're always trying to uh, pick a fight between us and like a friend of ours. Yeah. Like it's always lane. It's always shallow. It's always, who's another one of our friends. I've had I, people with Mike. Uh, it's too. always Eugene. It's always, you know, it's always like one of our friends that um, I think are incredible communicators are um, uh, unbelievably brilliant and talented at what they do. And there's certain things that we communicate differently and we just don't exactly see a hundred percent eye to eye. And I don't necessarily think that they're right or wrong or we're right or wrong. It's just, it's, it really, it's the context that matters. That's like, it. I bet you very can, much the context. And, I, and it, it annoys whole... me because I, 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 you know, and I can't help it because I want to address it. Cause it's just like, I hate when people try and drive a wedge between us and somebody who we have a lot of respect for. And it's like, listen, I get what he's saying and why he's saying it. And, you know, if I'm training, let's say you, for example, and I know this is like a fit, like trainer person, like absolutely. Do I, could I get some extra value in a, getting you on a leg press or a hack squat and pushing you to fa failure? Sure. I might get some benefit from that. And sure. I would potentially do that with you, but my client Amir, who is an engineer who is 47 years old and is never really weight trained in his life and stuff like that, would I, how much benefit would I get out of taking them to failure? Even if I got some benefit, which he's making a point that you could get some benefit from that, I think that the risk of throwing his form off and increasing DOMS is not worth what I'm going to get from it. No. I, and especially, and you, and I know this person knows that I'm the guy who says the goal is always to do as little as possible to elicit the most of change. So what the fuck do you think I'm going to say yeah. to something like that? You know, but it's like, he makes sense and what he's saying. And I don't, I don't necessarily disagree, yeah. but I feel like everybody wants controversy and fight and, yeah. and like this. And it's like the stuff you guys want to argue and fight over is so dumb. Well, the context matters a lot. Cause if you put us all in the same context and you ask us the same question, you're going to get very, very similar, if not the same answers. This mm -hmm. is what ends up happening. Mm -hmm. right. You you ask good trainers and coaches who've worked with a lot of people a question. You make it general. You might get some differing answers, 
right? But if you ask us a specific question, right, right. here's client A, here's what they're doing, here's their history, what should you do? And that's I why bet you'll that's get why, the same answer. That's why I gave him the example, like, okay, am I am I am I talking about you or am I talking about a mirror? Yeah. And if you if you give me a very sp you build me an avatar and say this client has this much experience, they have this is their yeah. goal, this is this and this, and I can give you a very uh, specific type of protocol or argument for why I would train a specific way. But if you send me a, a post or a quote or so a statement that somebody makes it, it in in a, in a general context. Mm -hmm. especially someone who I respect and I think is really smart and you you want me to like talk shit so then you can screenshot mm -hmm. it and then send it over to him or like, tech, oh, Adam thinks you're wrong. It's like, get out of here with that, dude. I'm, yeah. like, I'm going to get baited into that. It's like it, it, you're, you're pulling a, a 30 second clip that I don't even know the whole conversation right. that he potentially is having with all these coaches. There's lots of studies. It's a completely different audience, yeah. you know, like it's so you, you got to put all those factors into play and it's such an individual thing to begin with. We're trying to, obviously kind of distill a lot of like what we've learned into digestible form for just your average type person, but also we're, we get after it. I think that what irks you the most is that people don't realize we still get after it and we still push intensity and we'll yeah. push the boundaries. But in terms of actual advice and coaching, um, you know, when we'd coach clients, like there's a lot of factors that lead up to that, that we have to discuss first. Yeah. And, and most people don't program failure properly. Bottom line. Well, and I also think it's a that, button that they hit. All I the also think that we've been doing this between the three of us long enough to know that, that I, I think we try and uh, communicate to the, the majority most of the time, Correct. right? Not the minority. And, and so when, when I, I, I actually could care less about communicating, uh, in comparison to the super advanced genetically exactly. gifted, Fitness how fanatic. much coaching do they need? You know what I communicate to them? Yeah. You know what I communicate to them? How to how to how to communicate better to their clients if they have clients. That's what I'm that's what I'm talking to. To right. the to the one percent of the one percent, it's an echo chamber. You guys can all talk to each other and uh, about the latest study on the newest technique that's gonna increase muscle growth by 0.2% yeah. versus something like okay, that's fine, that's great. But none of that applies to yeah. to ninety nine point nine percent. Yeah, none of that applies if you can't even get your people to be consistent. Yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's why, and that's the part I think that frustrates me. It's like you guys are you guys are trying to create arguments and division between people in the fitness space over things that don't even really matter that much. It's mm -hmm. like it's not even it's not even a, a a real valid argument. It's like you you're wanting to argue over something that is really speaking to a very very small portion of people when in, in reality we're all and ideally especially someone who i know like jordan and the lanes and the, like we're all trying to help people i mean that's the ultimate yeah. goal and educate and stuff like that and so trying to find where somebody oh they say this this way and you say that they're so who's wrong who's right here yeah. it's like well <laughs> well you know what happens we end up getting in the same room and then we'll we we'll, agree yeah i know that's why that's because so funny yeah no i that's that's why i wanted to point that out because it, it happens between those people a lot because there there are certain things that we just we have we, different maybe training philosophies maybe we communicate different maybe that's mainly what it is it's well and then also i mean i've heard shallow talk about us before really well it's like he knows that we know our our demographic yep we know who we're, we're trying to reach the masses I'm, I'm i'm not interested in 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 helping just the uh the, the elite or the, the the coaches and the, the the trainers that are like super consistent. Like I want to help everybody out. Now I believe that we can communicate a message that helps both it really advanced people because I like to think that we fall in that category. Sure. Yeah, I like to think we fall in a category of pretty sure. advanced people, and and so we share our journey, our process, the things that we've learned over all these years. In addition to trying to communicate a message that helps the majority, that helps your mom, that helps yeah. your aunt, that helps your, you know, sister-in-law, like stuff like speaking that. Of, speaking of trainers and coaches, uh, how much do you guys think the top trainers in the world can charge per session? In the world? Yeah. Per session? Yeah. A thousand an hour? Yeah. So, so Arnold Schwarzenegger. That'd be like the most, right? Who's obviously a celebrity, so maybe that doesn't count. That should Arnold, I know, it doesn't count. So he, he did a fundraiser, and the way he raised money for this particular fundraiser was he charged for a personal training session from him. And he got people to buy it. You, want, you guys want to guess how much he was able <laughs> oh, to charge? For well, fundraising, fundraise, come on. You get but, like and it's 50, Arnold, 50, too. Yeah. Or no, it's way more than 150 that. 150 grand. Yeah, I was going to say. 100, yeah. 150, 150 thousand dollars. And he, he, he said, for 150 thousand dollars, I'll take you through a workout for a full hour. You hang out. 
and he had a bunch of people sign up. And I don't remember who the see now that okay, that's something cool, and that is something. So I, we, I mean, you get to hang out with Arnold. That's, I get that's really what it yeah. is. I've got I've got messages before of like to oh, do you guys still coach or would you train me or oh, I would pay whatever. And I'm like, no, you wouldn't because I wouldn't. If the amount of money I would charge you to charge an hour, I wouldn't even feel <laughs> It'd be insulting. To yeah, you. it would be insulting to do that. So I wouldn't do that, but I would do that. If 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 we were trying to drive money to like a cool charity, I would charge a ridiculous amount of money, and then I would train. Someone I would pay for, that for that specific. I reason. would pay that to me to hang out with Arnold. Not now, but like if I was like a bazillionaire, I would pay one hundred fifty grand to hang out with Arnold. If you're a bazillionaire, you know of course, I mean? well, because it's all relative. Well, it's just it's really it's just, like a like if I had the like money, getting that, a hot dog. It's, <laughs> it's, well, it's like that. Yeah. If it's you're like a bazillionaire, one hundred fifty grand bought a ride around a, the moon on SpaceX. You see that. Well, oh. who did what? Yeah, so SpaceX just like got uh, some billionaire paid for a ride to, what? Go, to fly around what? the moon. What? Like a commercial That's ride? Like for same. what? That's not the same. Bro. What? what? I, oh, it, I can't wait. It's you, all this, on camera. Dude, you got to record it. You guys are so funny, dude. What? Okay, so I'm. Bro, so you double down so hard on this. Wait so a funny. second. Yeah. You're talking about. I'm a, bringing it up so you have a, some fodder. A non astronaut. A, ra a, a person, That's not a, how you a billionaire. It. That's not how you sold it. That is exactly said, how I no, sold you it. Didn't. You didn't. You said, you said I said with commercial use. flights, the average person is going to yeah. go up there. I said, you mean billion? No, no, no. I mean, it's going to make me. Oh gonna be my trips. god! We, oh good my thing god. we got to record it. Okay, yes. so what? So is that? Uh, do I have to wait till somebody on welfare goes around the no. fucking moon before you guys? <laughs> but when it becomes like, no, well, going to be like. So wait, okay, so if already billionaires are able to pay for it, at what point do I way after? Because you guys are you guys are sending me robots that can't even fucking pick up a dish. Same level as spray a fucking hose all over the, all over the world like oh look it it's almost here Adam but it's still a robot I'll tell you what right? no this yeah. was the bet the bet was that average people are going to get okay a so trip to wait, the wait, then, then let's so I know when I win or when I potentially lose this what is it what does that mean an average person since a billionaire doesn't classify as an average person so do I have to have a special income that gets to fly like like what tell me okay. so I know so here's the bet you're going to see robots washing dishes on mass before you see people just taking trips to the moon. So what does that look like? I mean, not yeah. like one billionaire, maybe like like it would like a first class flight to Europe, something like that, which is expensive. First class flight, ten grand, fifteen grand. So is that okay? Is that, is okay, that, is no, that's that fair? okay. That's fair. Yeah, that that and that's where I, that's the argument I'm making. I I do absolutely think that that's what I would. By I the mean, way, he didn't land on the moon. He went around the moon. Yeah, there was no moon landing. No moon he went landing. around the moon. It was a big it. difference. Yeah. No, that's not what I said. I was talking about what was already been said is being worked on. Is that they're talking about a trip that is nonstop that goes around the moon and comes back. Okay, so you yeah. want to make it an around the moon trip? Yeah, that's, that's a, okay. because that's what that's what they're building and designing. That's moon what viewing. They, were, they were talking about <laughs> years ago when I brought it up. This, this is, is the dumbest bit. You be, <laughs> you part well, of what's the, gonna be dumb is the, the nuance of it when you guys are high gonna, club. Like there, yeah. okay, there is no robots, not in billionaires' houses or anything, doing dishes right now. But yet, there's billionaires going around already. Well, the moon. Well, first off, so who is really closer first in this off, argument? Technically, my right. dishwasher is washes there? dishes, yeah. but I know what you want. You want a robot that's like, "Hi, Adam. I will hey, wash your dishes." <laughs> Puts it in. That I takes it your dishwasher does elsewhere. not get your dishes out of the sink and then wash the okay, dishes. So you, okay, so That's the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> Let's spell it out. A robot, a robot that does your dishes. Okay, hold on. So that doesn't be spelled out. It's it that takes, simple. No, no, hold on. Takes the dish that's Wait, dirty. And then puts it in the dishwasher. And then after have it's to clean, it. no. do they have to take it out? Well, that's going to be the problem, by the way. Yeah. Okay? So well, that's that that's is, their hurdle right? right now. That's a huge hurdle well, for them. Is that, details, that, uh, that a dumb robot <laughs> cannot figure out if the dish is clean or not clean already. It can, we have things that does, that does this. You know? That ain't that, that, ain't that complicated. Oh. <laughs> But it's got to be smart enough to clean the dish and like, put it like in there. Like the delicate ones. Like you got to do the pots, it, pans. Here, and here's what, here's the, the thing, though. What do you think is going to happen first? Sex robots or robots that wash your dishes? Sex robots. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> that's way... I mean, everybody knows that. They Porn is like the first breakthrough of this. everything. There's all the money's there. <laughs> that's true. That's yeah, true. I, that, I mean, I'm <laughs> that. I argue, I argue that for sure, 100. <laughs> percent oh, Bill man. Gates invests two billion dollars <laughs> yeah. in hand job robots. Oh my yeah. God. Can he wash my dishes? No, no, no. I'm not gonna. We don't well, care about yeah, that. Yes. Tell the audience stop sending me dumb robot stuff. People send me these dumb robot stuff <laughs> all the time. Now. That's hilarious. Yeah. Anyway. They send me. They send me. It'd be like a robot with like a hose, like blasting a fucking bathroom. And they're like, oh, it's almost. Here, Adam, I'm like, okay, yeah. that's really close. They've, you know, that you ever see those? Uh, you put a hose in those sprinklers, they go, 
yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We've had those for like 50 years, dude. That's about what your big ass clunky robot does right now oh for cleaning. God. That's exactly what it looks you know like. What? We'll see about that. Yeah, you, you, this is all on, this is all on record. When the robot uprising happens, they're gonna, be they're gonna play this at your trial. Uh, <laughs> Adam's gonna be in jail forever. Yeah, uh, I mean, you guys, you guys feel pretty confident about it, but uh, there's already humans doing well, what I still said. On. There's no robots yeah. doing what you guys so, said. Uh, we'll see about that. We'll see, Speaking of trips, uh, I went to LA yesterday. Okay. Had a great trip. I got to so, tell you guys something about that trip. Wait, right? wait, 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 wait. Before you, I, the thing that I've been dying to ask you, and I waited to ask you until you're live on air because I want to hear you say it. Okay. Mm. You got to meet Mike O'Hearn. Yes. Okay. And you said something over text that I want to hear you explain yourself because okay. I, I, and I've never met Mike in person, right? But you said you 100% believe he's natural. I do. Now, after meeting him. I do. Wow, wow, I do. Come so, on, so I've heard him spill the beans. I've heard him talk. Statement. I've heard him talk. I've heard him say how he's natural, this and that. I also know enough now, where I've met <clears throat> professional athletes. I've met people in this category of people. Where, by the way, when you meet someone that's seven foot tall, which is rare, nobody says they take steroids or whatever because we don't have drugs that can do that. And yet here we have people that are so tall. That it's, you never see them in real life. You never see someone that's seven foot tall in real life unless you go to NBA game, right? That's how rare some, some genetics are when it comes to muscle building athletic performance. And I've met some professional athletes <clears throat> where you look at them, steroids or not, and you just realize like there's a completely different class of humans. So that's, that's I'm going to paint the context. Now, when I met Mike, he's definitely a muscular guy. But when you meet him in person, he doesn't have that, that, that look where you're like, oh my God, that doesn't look real. What he looks like is a very built, super genetically gifted individual. He's a tall guy. He's definitely muscular. And when you see him on, on Instagram and pictures, he's ripped and he's posing and he's pumped. And that makes you look so much bigger. But if he stood next to a roided out pro bodybuilder, you would clearly see the difference. Now, I'm not saying he doesn't look impressive. He looks very impressive, but I believe him. I also hung out with him a little bit. And Mike is ex he's a very authentic individual. I know he has a character that he plays, and, he, and he, when he communicates, he's an actor and all that stuff. But I met him. I met his wife. I met his staff. Super nice, down to earth, real, authentic people. So I have no reason to believe. And I also don't give a shit to be honest with you. No, I, I know you care. do. That's, I, yeah. This is why I was so curious about this yeah. conversation because I actually I believe your opinion more than I believe all the trolls on the internet because something that you said that is so true. Hmm. Uh, it is amazing what a pump, lighting, oil, being lean, lean as yeah. shit will can make you look like for a picture. Yep. Mm -hmm. Versus how your way you look like when you just walk around. And He's, he was also yeah. he was an animal when he was 16, 17. That's the old. other thing that makes it believable yeah. because he was he was already a freak at sixteen years old. Yeah. So the fact that he looked already like a, unless he's been doing steroids since he was twelve. No. He's he potentially could have that. 1% of 1% type of genetics that just responds so well. He's got incredible genetics, and then his work ethic and consistency is insane. This guy's been working out consistently since he was a kid, and I don't know how old is he now, in his 50s? He's been doing it nonstop uh, since then. Super consistent with his diet, super consistent with his training. So Do you I have any duck eggs? I have no, huh? Do you have any duck eggs? No, I, I didn't. No, no duck eggs. No. Duck eggs. You yeah, know how nice they are, about. though. That's his thing. That's his. He eats a, duck eggs. Yeah, yeah. That's like that's like super, super rich yolks. You never ate a duck egg? I mean, what's the one that's like kind of black and it's, it's like a little bit rotten? It's like a delicacy. Oh, is that when they they I got hazed with one of those things? No, you didn't. Yeah, dude. That's when disgusting. they let it develop a little bit. And you got to yeah, eat the and it's oh. like a little bit grown, like, um, like a little bird. Yeah, the bird, like the chicken. Isn't that or, illegal? Or no, it's a, like a Filipino. Isn't that yeah, a, Filipino like a Filipino dish? Filipino or? I know the Vietnamese. Vietnamese. That's it. Yeah, disgusting. Does. It's 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 it like a it's like well, a partially formed. There's Chinese ones too called century eggs. Yeah, sometimes it's, called thousand year old eggs. Uh, smells black. Are you ate. You, you know, ate, ate, did you have to eat worst, it? Worst. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I yacked it up. I didn't eat. Like, oh. Half well. Anyway, it. so I, I go to his house. Super, super nice guy. Super nice staff. His wife is, by the way, hilarious. She's super. No filter. Very real. Great people. And um, had a great conversation with him. Hung out a little bit afterwards. This is how nice they are. It's how great they are. Right. So after we're done, and it's business, right? So I'm here to do the podcast, whatever. After we're done, I'm like, hey, is there anywhere to eat? 
that's kind of healthy close by because I got to get on another a podcast or whatever. And his wife's like, oh, we got, I can make you some some turkey and some rice and some vegetables if you want. I'm like, no, 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 you don't have to do that. No, no, let me make it for you. I'm like, no, I, I kind of convinced them that no, I got to take off. Like what nice people to invite, you know, to invite me to kind of have a home cooked meal type of deal. So cool. So you really yeah. liked him then. Right. Really liked him. Really well, liked him good, yeah. yeah, super down to earth. Um, and then I met with Lewis Howes. I was on his show. His show's exploded since the last, we had him on our show, which was, how long ago was it that we had him on? It was like four or five Man, years ago? years ago. Mm-hmm. It's been a long time, right? Was it before here? Uh, no, I don't think so. We were here, right? But we were probably about four years ago. Probably about four years ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're, um, so he's got a you know, full production team and everything. And um, him and I talked a lot about you know media and where it's going. He's got a full on media company, so- so when we went last time, we went and we recorded out of his apartment in yeah, LA. Yeah, no, he's got like a studio now. Oh wow! Yeah, full on studio and, and a, a staff different there. sets or just one set. What's it look like? Um, all I saw was there was like one area that looked like an office uh, where he had his editor and producer, and then there was a room you walked into that was the where they recorded. So it was like a set that was set up, and it was in a building in LA. So I think this building is like office space. I mean, we've done lots of these uh, on on the level of impressiveness to you as far as like the studio itself and everything. Like, is it one of the best ones you've seen? Well, uh, Tom Bilyeu's got like a huge like yeah. movie setup. Well, yeah. So his Bill, has got to be the most. has his in a multi-million dollar mansion. Yeah. So, so his, his is the most like impressive. Mm-hmm. For, but you know, Lewis has got such good quality. Like if you watch his uh, videos and stuff on, on YouTube, it's so professionally done. I actually talked to his producer about it because they use lavaliers. So they don't use mics, right? They use lavaliers. Mm. I'm like, wow, you guys do this all on lavaliers. And he goes, yeah, we want it to look like a show show. And his producer, I think it's his producer, one of his editors goes, yeah, it's a lot of editing. It's a lot of work to make the sound sound the way that it does. Is, would the sound be, it'd be harder to make the sound good on lavaliers than- Oh, absolutely. Oh, I really? mean, these, the mic quality here is much better. Yeah. So I was listening to one of Lewis's uh, interviews a while back and- What has to happen too, because of the crosstalk that comes from picking up the other person's voice on your mic, Mm -hmm. that I bet they have to cut every uh, time that the guy's not speaking, just so that that audio comes off the track. The the guy told said he did. There's a lot of editing. Yeah, I I can tell that they did a lot of editing. He's not. He's got a full on media company, um, and they're doing you know video, audio, written content. They're working on, and his goal is similar to ours, except he's more in the like inspiration, motivation kind of life, you know, style type of stuff, whereas we're more fitness. Uh, Did you guys watch that Alex Hormozzi clip that I sent you? No. Oh, that, that was with Lewis, right? Yeah. yeah I, no, 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 no. It wasn't that one. Not the one. The oh. That was the single clip where he's oh, talking yeah, about- Oh, yeah, I saw the other one, yeah. How mm-hmm. oil and energy in the past and now mm-hmm. where we're at. You guys are fucking terrible <laughs> Why don't you tell us? <laughs> well, if I send you a clip, okay, I rarely ever send clips like watch, and I say watch this. Yeah. Like it's a, it's a, just a, it was a really powerful video. I'll have Andrew share- uh, the clip for the audience because I tell you what that guy's putting out so much so much is good. that where you said he's going to be no 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 one no, of the top a, dudes no oh yeah that's where I that's said that. one, right? I said yeah he just because the that is just because I think he's putting out such incredible he he's a he's very very effective communicator oh my god he's a good communicator yeah that's that's, that's really 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 good communicator what was the gist of it what was he saying he was talking about uh, and the reason why I'm bringing this up because you're talking about media and him having yeah. a media company is. is that we we have shifted on like the the most powerful companies, right? He's talked about back, you know, say 30, 40 years ago, you know, it was um, power. Like, you know, so you have your your gas, your yeah. electricity, so your PG&Es, yeah. your Exxons, like these were the the hottest companies, the most powerful companies in the world. And we've now shifted that over to Facebook, Google, you know, these companies that uh, you know, all that have uh, your attention. He goes, the new commodity is is attention. Yeah. And so yeah. that has become so unbelievably powerful and valuable that if that is just your main focus, and he, he did this whole like little pyramid thing, uh, and you'll see on the video where he's talking about like, if, if you can get a couple of these st- pieces you're going to have a, a successful company. And one of those is just that ability to garner that amount of attention. And so people are always so focused on, oh, a product and my my invention or oh, what are we going to sell and how much are we going to price it at? And how are we going to convert? And like, it's like, dude, if you just do a good job- Get attention, get of an getting audience. A, getting a, yeah, getting yeah. attention, getting an audience. Well, I mean, Kim Kardashian, doesn't she have the number one makeup company? That's right. Now? Well, he uses examples mm-hmm. like that. And like he beat, the, she beat L'Oreal and Maybelline. These companies yeah. have been around for a hundred years. Yes. And he, and, he, and he talks about Mr. Beast- you know, he claims that, you know, he'll be a hundred billionaire in our lifetime. Like that guy is getting, is getting so much attention. And once he, and what he, he's just now starting to venture out into chocolate burgers. Like it's, yeah. 
it's unlimited to what he can potentially do now because he is garnering that much attention. It's just insane. And there's, by the way, and in that video, he talked about the restaurant. I think you talked about on the show the other day. It was 12,000 people showed up to a launch of a, a, <laughs> a restaurant. Insane. That's crazy. In person. 12,000, bro. <laughs> you know what 12,000 people looks like? That's like the shark arena. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Or arena. Just all of, standing and waiting. Could you imagine like launching a, a launching a, a restaurant and then having that? That's no, you'd be like, I mean, the best restaurant of all time. Like just you know, instantly. All, instantly. Pro all products are going to have to be uh, content producers in the future or attached to content producers. That's yeah. it. That's just how it's going to be from now on. Oh, yeah. Because it's about the content because advertising has changed. It's changed quite a bit. It's yeah. not like you just... I, I was watching regular TV because that one, when I went down to LA, obviously I stayed in a hotel room, and you know what you have there is regular TV, and it's no wonder they're dying. You ever watch? Have you? Yeah. When's the last time you watched regular TV? Every five seconds, there's 15 commercials. So did you talk sucks. to him about that? Because he's been on like your Ellen's, your Doctor Oz's, maybe, but I, I've seen him on a few of those like mainstream TV shows. Well, I mean, he's trying to go full on become a media company himself, yeah. be that content producer. Because once you do that, like you said, Adam. Then, yeah, then the sky's the limit. You know, something else happened while I was going down there that was just infuriating. And I made some comments on the plane that got people uncomfortable, I'm sure. What? I'm sitting, so I'm sitting probably <laughs> seven rows back from the front. So I'm like seven rows back. And I sit down and I put my headphones on and I'm chilling. Right Anyways, a young lady walks in and she's just, she's petite and she's trying to put her luggage in the overhead compartment, right? And she's literally... First off, she's surrounded by men. There's at least six men sitting around her. And she's trying to put it in, and she's struggling and pushing, and this poor girl can't get it in. And I'm looking at these guys who are like five rows in front of me, and they're all just like, bleh, duh, bleh. and this poor girl's like, she puts it down. She get Finally, I stand up and I go over, and there's like six guys around here who can't help you. How embarrassing. I stuff it in. All the guys are like, ugh. I could tell I made them uncomfortable. What the hell's going on with men? <laughs> what a bunch of lazy Lost pussies. It, man. You see yeah. a young lady need some help? Stand up and fucking help her. What the hell's wrong with you guys, man? So, it made me yeah. so mad. Chivalry's dead, dude. It's, it's, it's so bad. You ever see that? Like somebody's trying to open a door and they need help and people are just standing around. Like, that annoys the shit out of That's me. how it, it's weird how it is like that right now. It's, it's really, really annoying. No, anyway, sure. I want to hear about your meatballs, Adam, because oh, you know, I, <laughs> I heard you have amazing meatballs. I was going wow. to transition during Justin's uh, egg, poisonous egg or whatever, his, or his dying bird egg. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'll be a terrible Butcher Box commercial if I Yeah, don't, don't attach those <laughs> yeah. together. Yeah, that was hazing. That's so uh, Adam's a meet the balls. Uh, so Butcher Box has, first time I've had tried this, Katrina tried it, or ordered it. She goes, hey, I, uh, uh, I want to do this uh, meatballs for dinner. Or meatballs we never do meatballs uh she's like yeah no butcher box has it and i'm like okay whatever Put, like i think 13 minutes and nothing done like they're already like seasoned up and everything oh okay straight in the air fryer 13 minutes bomb hmm. absolutely bomb are they you guys beef? not done the, uh, the meatballs i haven't room? done the meatballs yet. I I don't know do that. get the meatballs i can't wait to like try so now that i got Did them you do I, anything on them nothing just meatball. just straight by themselves they were fired are they like big yeah they're like Justin likes big ones. I, mean, yeah. I like them big. Yeah, no, they're big. big. Now, I know Courtney does like a, a big meatball re spaghetti recipe. Yes. I've had does. it before. Yeah. So now I can't wait to go and try it in and like spaghetti or try it in like, you <laughs> know. you point at me. <laughs> all your approval. <laughs> <laughs> Italian <laughs> representation here. Yeah. I represent the. It was really good. I, you know, I, we, I'm like the one out of all of us who probably doesn't rotate his butcher box, uh, you know, box that often. And Katrina, and I actually was telling her the last time we were talking, like, you know, I really need to go through all their stuff because it's, it's terrible. I don't have any good butcher box commercials. So that was really the intent was to do it. So I had something to talk about. And it was that yeah. good. And it was hella good. Yeah. So you know, yeah, I'm so, pumped. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, so I want to do that. If you ever want to get like, uh, be a little hedonistic with your food, get meatballs like that. Right. Put some sauce on them. I can bring you guys some tomato sauce if you want and get some nice, French bread. Put sauce, meatballs, and a nice sandwich. Oh, How bad do you not want to go? I want to go to our boys' restaurant after meeting Mike and hanging oh, out right. with him. Yeah. I know. I do want to try that. Which one? The meatball yeah, shop yeah, in New York. Meatball oh, meatball shop. Well, that's over. Okay, literally dedicated to meatballs. Yeah, I mean, we've been making an excuse to go out there anyways. We've been talking about going that way for a long time. So. Fly all the way over there for some meatball sandwiches. <laughs> hey, that why not? Like, that sounds like a damn Make good a idea. I mean, the, the, the restaurant blew up. I mean, yeah. he crushed it. So Aren't they giving away free turkeys, too, because yes. it's close to Thanksgiving? Yeah, oh. they're giving away a free turkey in every box for first-time uh, orders. Can I what? tell you something? Hills, a free yeah. 10 to 14-pound turkey. That's oh, that'll be as, as supplies last, right? That's not that they're, they're not 
they didn't mention that, but oh, I suppose wow. that's true. Let me look at yeah, the, the main, main dock. Line. I tell you what, when it comes to turkey. Because turkeys almost always sell out. Isn't that, don't mm, they almost yeah. always sell out yeah. for um, Thanksgiving? Yeah, yeah, it's like you got to buy them like earlier every year, it yeah. seems like. I, I, I'll tell you what, though, uh, ever since eating a deep fried turkey, I don't like turkey anymore. It's tough way. to go back, right? I, it's, I can't eat turkey anymore. I mean, the smoked no. turkeys, I think, are, you know, uh, that, that's good. That's a good move, too. It's not bad, but a nice deep. Didn't you deep fry one once? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I deep fried for us. That's the best, man. Mm -hmm. our, our Katrina's family, they want one of each. That's what we do. So I deep fry, and then her brother normally cooks in the oven. So we know. I'm scared to deep it's, fry. All those stupid videos of people yeah. setting everything on fire. <laughs> I'm Those are idiots. Yes. <laughs> I'm an idiot sometimes. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. That's why you get people that like are good at what they do to you're help. You're a brilliant idiot, bro. But, oh, uh, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. So you're brilliant. You get help. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, of, of of brilliant idiots, I've been reading about quantum <laughs> uh, mechanics lately. Oh, wow. Bro, Here did you go. know? <laughs> I'm not going to get into the weeds. Good transition. Like that. <laughs> Mainly because I can't explain it. But um, are you guys familiar with quantum entanglement? Do you know I what that means? Not. I okay. yes. Justin knows. Okay. I do, yeah. Quantum entanglement is when they this is a this is this is freaking weird, Adam. They take two particles, right? Two particles, light particles, uh, and they create at the same time. They separate them. Split them. They separate them by vast distances, and what you do to one happens to the other one instantly. Yeah, and they're how far apart? They're, as far you as can far put as one. As you put them, you can put one on the other end of the universe. Yeah, and what you spin one, it affects the spin of the other one instantly. So this has been a weird observation in quantum physics for a long time. And they just did more studies to confirm that this legit, yes, this is legit, it's happening. And we don't know what the hell's going on. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it poses two, two questions. Either the particles are communicating with each other infinitely fast, or space is a complete illusion. Yeah. There is no space. Everything's touching. Yeah. We're touching right now. We're to <laughs> <laughs> it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> We're all just touching. How weird is that? It's shit? just so weird. I can't even like that. This is something we need to just smoke a joint and like talk about. No, yes. bro, I, I, I was I, reading about this trip, and you guys know MRI machines use uh, quantum mechanics. You guys know that? No, I didn't know that. Yes, MRI machines change the particle. They, they affect the way that your particles rotate. I think in a particular way, and then it uses it to create an image. Now, do they spin in the same direction or do they no, spin opposite. in opposites, right? Opposite direction. That, so this, yeah. this might be a dumb question, but what what constitutes quantum physics? Like what constitutes us? The very, very small. Oh, yeah. oh. What, like, like so you just said it? that we that there's there's quantum physics used in the MRI machine. So what constitutes that? When you're dealing with the very, 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 very small, that's when the normal physics, which would be called uh, Newtonian physics, right? So mm. the physics we know of, like, um, like magnified by some whatever. Yeah. Degree. So like uh, an uh, an object in motion will continue in motion less acted upon by uh, you know whatever. So like the physics we experience every day. Like I push this microphone, I lift the ball, I throw a ball, whatever. When you go down to the very small, forget it all. It's it's all weird shit at that point. In fact, they're also now. And is that because things that small are is almost weightless? No, it's it's as if okay, it's gonna get real weird now. Ready? Okay, that's right. Can, <laughs> I know you're. Please, right can now. we pass a joint? It's, right, these now. are different. So like, yeah, different physics. It gets even weirder. Okay, so there's a there's a famous experiment called the double slit experiment, mm -hmm. which I think I've explained to you before. I think I've heard you talk about it. Before. Okay, we we've tried to explain this. Yeah, well, this they rough. maybe we'll put up a little video, Andrew. I could send you that uh, that it kind of breaks it down, but they've also now proven that nothing is basically real. In other words, um. Nothing is where it's at. It's the observer. Effect. Unless it's observed. Otherwise, it's everywhere at the same time. So, so I know I just confuse the shit out of you. So that's like the- But it's all confusing. Isn't that like the old tree thing? If a tree falls in the woods and no one hears it, then it doesn't happen. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. And quantum mechanics would say there is no tree or, or it's a potential right? of things. It's really weird shit, man. That is I weird. know. Yeah, fitness well, guy is explaining I quantum <laughs> mechanics. <laughs> yeah, I trip out on that kind of stuff. It's like- like almost if you could create a visual of what you perceive in terms of what's right in front of you. And so it's like a limited amount of what you perceive and you see a bunch of people with just that limited of what you perceive and everything else in between is just darkness. Well, it's, it's, um, particles act. It's like a potential. They call it a, uh, they call it a, it's, it's always in potential until it's observed and then it acts in a specific way. Yeah. Otherwise it's it almost gives it energy and, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like it's some, it's really, some kind but of you know what it makes there. me think of? It makes me feel like um, like we're in a big video game, like a big cosmic yeah. video game. That is right? how video games work. It is because the video game, 
when you're walking through the it's forest, all pixelated, in the video game, and then it becomes you become aware. Shit appears, but otherwise, it's just inside the video game as a potential. That's that's the way I look at it. Anyways, yeah. this is all going to be We're, part of my uh, weekend adventure. Then I'm gonna. What do you I'll, do? I'll have to trip out on that. Um, I I got nobody at the house, so I got it all to myself. Where's yeah. the wife going? <laughs> Where's wife and kids going? They're going to, to Palm Desert. Uh, so I gotta, you're going to be thinking about science, you liar? Game. No, I'm going to be... <laughs> I, was, I told... I was going to be, like, buying some music gear, dude. I'm getting all, like, serious about it again. I started writing songs again. And, oh, really? So, yeah, I'm like... Do you write love songs? No. Okay. Yeah, they're not, right, they're not love songs. I was going to ask you yeah. to write I was talking songs. to John they're Deloney angsty. yesterday about you, and it started actually about... I don't think I told you. I told these guys that the, he... Paid for our tickets to go to the uh, Malcolm Gladwell, Dave Ramsey, uh, Jordan Peterson uh, Summit. Oh, wow. So there's more people that oh, I'm sick. missing, too, that are great. Oh, that, bro. Deloney's yeah. such a great He's guy. It's like $20,000 a great... ticket. What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're going as Holy his guest. Schmoly. And then uh, one of the things he's trying to do right now is he really he's like so blown away by maps. Uh, he's been following it. And he's like so, and he's been. You guys got the package today. He's like we've been super yeah, he grateful. Yeah, gave us t-shirts. Where's mine? Show my shirt. He's trying to get uh, it approved for Sal to actually speak on that stage. That's yeah. so nerve wracking, right? Do you understand how? Do you understand That's so Whatever, dude, to speak? How? Hey, how bro, cool to speak at the same this stage? This is so cool that that uh, talk about It'd be like so good for you. It might not happen. Yeah, but it but might the fact not happen. That even said it. Just the fact that it's a possibility. Somebody like Jordan Peterson, who you absolutely love, to think that we we and we've been back and forth with his team. Like mm -hmm. again, they're communicating with us about another, and that the time the. What we might end up meeting as you speaking on stage with him before we ever get him on the show. I just think that's <laughs> what the hell am I going to talk so about cool. after those yeah, guys go? What are you talking talk? about? What are you ever lost for words? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> what do I say? Yeah. No, I mean, I have a lot to <laughs> say. So we're like, you got thirty minutes, this? bro. Get your ass off the bro, stage. You know what's like? You it's like it's like, hey, you're going to do a stand up uh, com uh, comedy show right yeah. after Dave Chappelle. No, you know what I mean? But yeah, but yeah. Any, okay. So back to why well, I brought it up to Justin. So yeah, wants Justin to play. I was I was telling him. No way, dude. Well, no, he was bringing he was bringing up like us going up there, and I said, "Nah." I said, "I, I said, um, Sal is the one who goes and speaks for us." I said, "I used to do it with him. I'm trying to remove myself. I go around, shake hands, kiss babies, and and talk business shake to people. Shake babies and kiss hands. Yeah, that's yeah. right." And then I said, "Sal goes up and talks." In the right. Yeah. He goes, "Well, maybe uh, maybe you can come and you could do like push ups on the side, and Justin could play his guitar on the stage." <laughs> like, I was like, "Don't you dare tell Justin Don't that." Tell I said, "Because that. if anything breaks up mind pump, it'll be Justin's desire to go back and." Create that a has band nothing again. to do with break. It, it's enhancing, right? Like, <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm always distracted. Bro, you. we're gonna be doing more live events. You, you say know, that, and practice. then all of a sudden you get a bunch of people that love it. And then you're like, oh fuck, you know mind what? Pump, Whatever, dude. My own it's, band. It's, some people might love there's it. There's a reason. Know? There's a reason why all business inquiries go through Adam because it filters out <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the people interested in signing you on a record. It's not gonna record. happen. Adam's dude. like, no, he's not interested. Later, later. Yeah, we're trying to keep you. It's really just for until the right offer comes. And I'm like, sure, I'll manage you. <laughs> we'll be his exactly. He'll, yeah, he'll be my manager. We get twenty five percent. It'll yeah. all be beneficial. Hey. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, between that and I'm also like preparing for this big sh like shindig we're throwing for Halloween, which uh, do you, oh, okay. Yeah. Do you, most can, people wait, are going to? All the can cool you share kids, this on the anyway. podcast? Like, how how deep are you into this now? How much money you spent Ooh, so far? I see you buying all kinds of grand, shit right now. A couple grand, couple. Yeah, not well, a good, good amount of money. Not like in the crazy, crazy. Yeah, okay. like I haven't hit the ten mark. It's too know. bad. I want to. It's too bad. We're so close to to Jessica giving like birth. I was like, I'm a little worried of going any, anywhere far around that time. You know what I mean? Yeah, it might Otherwise, get weird if it was there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> kind of cool. It might be cool though. Okay. Or it would ruin your party. Zzz, zzz. Yeah. 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 Hey, everybody, we're having a baby hey, in the bathtub. That would be awesome. Are, are you guys? Are what are you, are you doing? DJ or doing a bar? What's the, what's the so setup? I have two. DJs two two I know it's kind wow. of excessive but um yeah one for outside and then one inside is just pure karaoke so uh, you know that was just for my own self interest um it, yes. so I could just be on the you know be yes. on that all night uh and I have like just more decorations and stuff like dude the thing is uh my other house was a lot easier to decorate this one's like where my where do I go from because the outside there's a lot that like potentially i'm like oh i'd love this like huge uh scary like skeleton here like something crazy that you like drive up to yeah and it's like i gotta you know slow my roll and, and pace it out so maybe next year i'll start like adding one big thing at a time yeah yeah but like i'm starting to get into it. i'm like oh this could be fun dude all you need are everybody dress up in costumes and alcohol did you i was gonna yeah. say but did you say bartender or no 
Oh yeah, so no, no bar tent. We're gonna have plenty of uh, uh, drinks without like a keg and um, oh, okay. like drinks already lined up. Oh, you better contact Zbiotics because uh, we always run out real fast, Justin. So I get a whole bunch. I would love that. Yeah, so I'm gonna. I if was you're watching actually, the Zbiotics. Send us some, please, for the party. <laughs> I we'll was about to order like a case because it's like I did that last time and I threw a party and it was they're gone like completely gone. They even went into the pantry and like found all my personal <clears throat> stash of z <Z-Biotics> and like, <laughs> I just, I do the hundred packs now just, and then just slowly chip away at that. Yeah. It's like over the, over the course of a year, especially with Katrina's family, Katrina's family has enough parties and drinks enough that we go through. Don't you guys feel like z would crush it if they worked with bars? And just yeah. sold them in bars. I've said that since day one. I don't know why they're not. I've never asked him why they haven't been able to work that out. Because mm. it's like I feel like once you use it, that's it. You never want to drink. I don't know any. Again. Well, you, you have, know, you have you've been in the it. you've been in the bar industry. What's it like to get like like Let's say somebody wants to get a yeah. new alcohol drink. Is it hard to it's break? Hard. Yeah, so it's yeah, hard but to it's, break through yeah. barriers, right? Yeah, because they also have deals with other providers, and it's in conflict a lot. Like they have like uh, certain contracts and things. Because we. Every now and then we get like Bailey's would come in and then they'd have some like special um, shot that they'd want us to promote and and nobody really liked it. And so we ended up just drinking all of it as bartenders because just to get rid of it or send it as like, you know, like a free drink. To uh, is it still a thing? So I remember in, in my twenties that you, you would go to a club on uh, here, down here, and there's all there would almost always be like uh, like two or three girls dressed in like bikinis and stuff like that, and they'd be like you know passing out Ciroc, or they would be doing like a, you know Budweiser's new like promoting yeah. something. Yeah, and they would be promoting it in the bar, but it would be like its own little thing standalone. Is that happen still? And and how does that work out? Do you know if that's like a deal that they well, make? Now they're the- in sweats. And no, no shut kidding. up. Justin, but, yeah. <laughs> Justin hasn't been to a bar as long as we have. Yeah, no, yeah, that still happens. Like they'll still have cocktail waitresses and things like the promoting. I'm trying to get drinks. you to get some for your party. No, these were always like these were like girls that didn't work for the bar. Yeah. They represent yeah, they represent the company. Yeah. Yeah. So how does that deal? What I'm asking is like, how does that work out? Like, does the bar make money or mm. kickback off of it? Do they or does this like Ciroc pay? A bar and go like, hey, we're gonna give you ten grand. Yeah, let some our, promotional, let, yeah, they, they they pay for promotional opportunities like that to come in the bar. And okay, like so that's what the reps. reason why I'm asking is I would think that would be the move. Is Zbiotic would come in and say, hey, I'm gonna pay. We're gonna pay you ten, twenty grand. Let us set up a little thing and then yeah. sell sell the little Zbiotics inside there. And maybe that's just a. I don't know where their budget is. You know, they're kind of yeah. That's old right? school, but effective. You know, that's like foot traffic kind of stuff. Because I, I really feel that's going to be the best way to move it. Is people just need to try it. You have to. Once you try it, that's it. You're mm-hmm. done deal. Yeah. I got to read you guys a comment that we got on one of our YouTube videos that was so good. I want to. I want to pull it. I want to bring it what, up. What? Uh, what uh, show? What so it, it was the episode where um, we talked about uh, what was the title of that episode, Doug? It was like why how fat phobia and other myths are keeping you fat, sick, and unhealthy. That's it, yeah. And it was one of those that I thought, we all thought might be a little controversy. I know Doug's butt was puckered the whole time while we we're doing the podcast because <laughs> we're going off on the on how politics has infiltrated fitness. By the way, I just posted in our story, which is going to be gone by the time this airs, but there's this girl who made this TikTok talking about how flat stomachs, the reason why flat stomachs are popular is because of sexism, racism, and Christianity, apparently. What? <laughs> I mean, it's getting crazy. It's getting so wild to me. I can't believe what's going on. So anyway, that whole episode was about some of the ridiculous wow. lies and myths you're being told and how a lot of it's propaganda and it's <clears throat> keeping you fat, sick, and unhealthy. Well, anyway, we talked about how there was a myth around how working out in gyms is for privileged people. And we talked about how, no, that's not the case at all and how we've all had like homeless people sign up, pay 20 bucks a month, be able to use the gyms. And we've even given free memberships to people right? because they want to work out so bad that they said, hey, I'll take out your trash, I'll do whatever. And we've all done that, right? Check out this this uh, this comment. This guy says, uh, man, I got choked up when you guys mentioned homeless people using gyms to shower. I was homeless at 18 for a while and I used the gym too. The manager, manager caught on because I had my duffel bag with all my clothes in it. He would give me protein shakes and bars, which was more than I could ever ask for. Forever grateful. Amazing how a kindness can change a life, and it came from a gym. Just highlights the gym culture that- So cool. Boom. This is why I get so yeah, mad- that needs to get propped Why up. I get so mad with this bullshit propaganda that tries to demonize one of the best cultures that exists in the world when it comes to inclusivity, acceptance, yeah. empowerment, just positivity. It's yeah, gym a culture. Melting pot of positivity. It's one of the best cultures in the world. So I just, I wanted to read that because it was so, so touching. Yeah, yeah. Good. that's great.
Hey, real quick, go check out this company, LMNT. They make electrolyte powder drinks that taste amazing and have the right amount of sodium for increased performance, recovery, and better muscle pumps when you lift out lift weights. Plus, no artificial sweeteners. And right now, LMNT is offering uh, all of our listeners a free sample pack with any order. So you get eight single-serving packets for free with any LMNT order. Go check them out. Go to drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Jessica Welch 06. What are the best ways for a female to get lean and muscular arms without looking too bulky while trying to build muscle overall, especially for women with broad shoulders? All right, so I'm going to say something that's just, it's just true. And I know some women are going to listen to this and be like, that's not true for me. Yeah, it's probably true for you. 99.9% of women who say, my arms get too bulky, just need to get leaner. That's just a fact. Uh, most women are not going to build <clears throat> arms that get huge and muscular. It just doesn't happen. What happens is women tend to store more body fat in their arms than men do, especially in the back of their arms. So anytime I've gotten a female client who was like, no, you don't understand. I get really bulky arms. What it was is that their body fat percentage was a little too high. And when we got them leaner, they were very happy with the way that the, the muscles of their arms looked. Well, thank you for mansplaining that for us. So. Oh, God. <laughs> You know you're going to leave me on this island. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Yeah, no, next no, no you're, you're right. Here's uh, here's the deal. Um, I when I when I would get clients like this, the 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 most challenging part was just to to get them comfortable with the fact that you actually may see the circumference in your arms go up, and you don't want that because and that by the way, this is where the lean tone. You know, marketing long muscle, yeah, long yeah. muscle bellies. This, the, these marketing gimmicks came from because if you told a woman that she's going to build her arms, when she's like, "No, I don't want to build them. I want them to be firm." And well, that's what you have to do if if you want tight, firm, lean, tone arms, you've got to build muscle mm -hmm. and build. If you first focus on building muscle before you do what you're saying, Sal, which is get really lean then the inevitable is going to happen. The circumference of the arms are probably going to get bigger. and But that's okay because if we build muscle on your arms or anywhere on your body, you're going to speed your metabolism up, which is going to help you lose body fat and get leaner. So I would have to just get my female clients that wanted to obtain this look that, hey, listen, just you got to trust the process with me that right now, we're going we're gonna to increase calories. We're going to build muscle. You might feel your pants fill out a little bit. You might feel your arms fill out and your shirts a little bit, but trust the process. If that happens, then I know you're building muscle because we're eating good and all, we're, I have you a little bit in a surplus, but we're going to speed this metabolism up. And then when I cut you down and we lean out, those arms are going to get sculpted just yeah. like you want. And they're going to look like that, but you got to trust the process. Lean, tight, sharp defined muscle okay like it's just different words yeah. like that's all yeah all it is 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 a, a complete marketing thing with that but uh, it's just the same process applies and it's it, it seems like it's different because yes a bit a little bit different chemistry but in terms of the actual training and the methods and and um you know using nutrition being in a deficit where we can uh reduce body fat like all that applies yeah, yeah. i mean it, i mean look again, nine out of 10 times women who think their arms are too big, it's just their body fat percentage is a little too high. It's very, very rare that well, you find a woman that builds actually big, massive here's what's muscles tough, though, in their Sal, arms. Here's what's tough, though, is their, their, their body fat percentage is high and their calorie intake is low. And so it, it puts a trainer or a coach in this weird predicament. I mean, Katrina is literally helping a good girlfriend of hers, and I won't, I won't put her name out there or put her on blast because I think she listens. But she's been helping her out. And she was eating 900 calories and she's like, I want, and she's like, I just want, and this is actually similar to what she's like, I just want, I want to define, I want to define arms and maybe lose 10 or 15 pounds, but she's got, she's eating 900 calories and she does the typical cardio circuit class to lose weights so with like that. And so, and then she basically, you know, starves herself yeah. to lose that 10 to 15 and then it always comes back so or more the building in that. Right. So Katrina's had her, Katrina's been helping her for the last seven weeks now. 
And she's like, you just got to trust me. I just listen to what, I mean, just give me, give me literally a couple months of teaching you what to do and trust the process. And, and she said, it's been this grueling process because, you know, of course she's increased her calories. So she's not seeing like her weight go down. Her weight has stayed exactly the same, but she's changing. And her, she's looking at, and she's up to twenty four hundred calories. That's phenomenal. From somebody wow. who was eating nine hundred calories, she's eating twenty four hundred. calories. She's probably like, built muscle and lost body oh, fat. She absolutely time. had to yeah. because her her scale hasn't changed, so her her body is changing. And and Katrina's trying to remind her, like, listen, we're 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 still we still want to keep going this direction, but she totally could at this place cut her five six hundred calories just to mm -hmm. show her, and that would show more definition in her arms, lean her stomach out a little bit, drop a little bit of weight on the scale. But you just have to trust that process. You have to trust the process of getting to this place. But it's hard when you're in that predicament, when you're in this, I'm only eating a thousand calories a day or whatever like that, and I want to lose weight, and I also want my arms to be muscular and defined. It's like you want your cake and eat it too, and the reality is we need to go through this building process first, and then we'll sculpt. I'll tell you what. Yep. I'll, I'll list the body parts that, and I'm talking about the general average person or, or even more so, like 90, 99% of everybody, the, the body parts that tend to develop fastest in women where they can actually build muscle to the point where I've had a few clients where we had to scale back because they were developing too much muscle in a particular area. And this is calves. Yep. Calves is number yep. one. My wife is one of these people. My wife has her, her calves. I will never get calves as muscular as my wife's. Okay. Calves number one. Second would be legs. And it's usually quads. Sometimes women can develop really big quads. Still not super common, but it's- I've it's traps before. It, women. Traps is pretty rare. It's but rare, but it, it has happened. It sticks out because they don't want big traps at all. Right. But it goes calves, legs, usually quads- um, then it goes maybe maybe shoulders and everything else is really slow developing. So what you end up with is this kind of the sculpt, muscular looking because you're lean physique, not big. You don't get big arms. It's so rare. So what does this mean in terms of training? Train to build. Train to build your arms. And then when you're you're at a point where your calories are where you can go down in calories and you're not going to go down too low, but you can cut, then you start to cut. You get lean, and then you'll get the look that you're looking for. What you don't want to do is avoid training your arms because you're afraid they're going to get too big. And what you're doing is you're 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 missing out on that metabolism boosting potential. And if you get lean without building some muscle in your arms, which is, again it's minor, but without building some, you don't get that same quote unquote tone sculpt look, right? So. I would not avoid training your arms for fear that you they're just got to trust the process. Listen, if you're if you're in a reverse diet. Your calories are increased, which more, more more than likely your carbs are up, which means you're going to hold a little bit of water, which means you potentially could see some weight go up on the scale, which means your arms could feel look and feel fuller than what they were before you were doing all these things. Yeah. But that is all part of the process. You've got to build the muscle first. You know, you got to build that metabolism first, and then we get to a place where we we carve and we and we and we chip away. But you got to trust that process. You got to, and it's a, it's a, a, a mental hurdle that you have to get over. One hundred percent. And if you don't do it, then you're, you're going to be forever stuck in this trap of every time you start to build a little bit of muscle, you freak out because your arms go up a quarter so of an inch. So now you're eating nine hundred calories a day. Yeah, and then you go right weight. back, and you're in the same trap. You got, you have to get, you have to get past this. Next question is from MPF Academy. What are your thoughts about workouts in a sauna? I see a lot of these places opening up. That's a thing? Yeah. Are you starting to see? Have you seen these yet? That's stupid. I've yeah. seen saunas, yeah, that were built so you could have weights in there and like do Classes workouts and stuff. And stuff. Yeah. Okay. Really? So, so, so stupid. Let's yeah. start with uh, why it's, why they're popping up and why they're popular because it's hard. Yeah. So, <laughs> it, it, this is a, by the way, this is a very like Bikram yoga. This is a very easy way. To, and I, now there are some benefits, and I'll get to that in just I, a second. So I would disagree with that. Well, not that. We no, no, no. There are benefits, but that, it's not. Yeah, but that's why it's getting popular is because you know the Rhonda Patricks and people out there that are talking about the benefits of sauna, and so you get what this people is what notorious. Yes, let's put yeah. put it together. It's like I, oh, sauna has lots of benefits. We know weight training does. Let's put them together. Actually, get ultimate benefits. Actually, I, I disagree, and here's why. Creatine I don't and think coffee. You know, I don't think they're getting. I don't think they're getting popular with the average person because of Rhonda Patrick. I think Rhonda Patrick. Speaks to sauna, sauna's benefits. I think that people are really into fitness, understand the benefits of sauna, so they use saunas the way that you're supposed to use them. I think they become popular because an easy way, you guys know this, if we wanted to create a fad, mm -hmm. a new fitness fad, what we do is we take something old, we add something to it, make it harder. That's all. 
So oh, take, I think I think take exercise just in the last decade. Add heat, the, add just heat. this la- this last listen. How uh, much you want to bet? Sunlight gonna... saunas, clear light. You have these companies didn't even exist a decade ago. Like infrared saunas are huge. You're right. right. Now. So there's more. There's more um, commercial appeal. Awareness. There's more awareness. Yes, yes awareness. exactly. So you. That's but why? I mean. But why is it popular to work out in them? It's hard. I, you want look? I'm going to say this right now, right. And, I, and it's on record. What's going to happen at some point is you're going to have super cold rooms that you work out in. Mark my words. Mark my words, they're going to go in the opposite direction at some point. You're going to go into a room that's refrigerated and it's freezing and you're going to do a workout in there. Why? Because you just work out outside in the elements I, at that hilarious, point, Hilarious, right? It's hilarious. stupid. So it's just, it's hard. <laughs> now, what are the benefits? Well, here's the benefit. Is it muscle building? Is it fat burning? Is it all? No, it's none of those things. The benefit is it'll in- increase or improve your heat tolerance. So what happens when you train in heat is you get better at tolerating training in heat. Is there value to this? Well, yeah, there's some value. Uh, if you work outside, if you're a roofer in the summer, if you're a wrestler or you train in judo and jujitsu where you wear a big ass gi and you got to fight somebody, like then there's some potential yeah. benefit. Listen, strength training is so difficult on its own. There's no reason to try and make it more difficult. <laughs> I'm serious. It is already difficult enough and comes with so many great benefits being able to train at high intensity level. There's no reason yeah. to add anything to it to make it more. There's no reason to put a mask on and exactly breathe through a straw. Where I was going next. There is no yes. reason. There, there's no reason to ski in a have sauna some, or, or have someone punch your abs. Yeah, or punch your abs while you're doing sit ups. There's no reason <laughs> to do any of that bullshit. It's already got enough benefits to it. I think it is just we got this hot thing right now. Like saunas are popular and there is lots of benefits to it. And we're trying to combine now, things. Now, what you'll know. Notice when you train in a sauna is your range of motion and your flexibility improve. So this is where I could see stretching in a sauna, some potential benefits. Well, that's like Bikram yoga. Yeah. And that, I'm, I'm more pro that than I would be strength but, training in it. But a, you know what the real benefit is with Bikram yoga and, and stuff like that is the, is that when you're in extreme heat, it makes you as present as possible. You're not thinking about anything else, but how hard this is. Right. And I'm here and I'm going through it. That's I've never been no, more present than 405 smell. on my back doing a barbell back squat, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah? Try yeah. 405 in a sauna. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, it's, it's, <laughs> you, know, you know what? Yes, good point. I wouldn't be able to do that. I would be so <laughs> hot and tolerable. I'd have to drop down to 315. Yeah. You just get one of those stem machines and just put it right, you know. In that's the new thing right now. You see that right now, right? Yeah. Make it Everybody's, that way. That's the, the new popular wave right now is the... Hooking everybody up to East End machines while they do barbell. Yeah, you've seen rows. the new suits that they're trying to promote with that too. Like it's going to maximize your workout because like you're getting basically shocked uh, as you're doing these exercises. So you know, there's always going to be something out there. Like to your point of just making it ridiculously harder. Like it's going to have some appeal. The the, on, the last time over the last I don't know. There's only been a couple times over the last twenty years where I've actually been like, wow. This is really wild. One was with occlusion training. Occlusion training is weird, mm-hmm. and it actually does some stuff. So occlusion training is kind of weird and interesting. And the other one was that one that one study where they had people wear those cold gloves. Yeah, oh, yeah. And then went and maxed the recovery out. recovery rate was insane. They went and maxed out on so many reps, and the, immediately the that performance. That one still fascinates me. That, those two things are really weird. But this kind of stuff, this is just fad stuff. Next question is from Amber Don Gomez 12. What are your thoughts on the women's cycle training? Yeah, okay, so this is when when there's workouts and stuff being created around this mm-hmm. where they'll say, oh, when you're ovulating or your, your luteal phase, you train this way. Ovulation, you train this way. You know, this is how you train when during these hormone cycles because women have a roughly, what is it, 28-day or 30-day cycle of hormones. Now, are they trying to map the, their body stress through this process? Is that like sort of well, the angle they're it's playing like, with that? It's like you're supposedly stronger um, and have more energy when you're ovulating, for example. And at these times, you're going to be more tired uh, and more stiff. And so you change the workouts accordingly. Now, here's yeah, – I get it, it. If it helps you, it works yeah. for you. Well, I, I get it. I get the theory. But I'm sure there's individual variances there you with go. how everybody that's, responds. That's to why it doesn't matter because you cycle. could be ovulating and your workout could be like, here's why I don't like this. I'll tell you why. Because a woman's going to buy a program that says during this phase of your cycle, you should be training this way. And maybe she had bad sleep last night or she got in a fight with her boyfriend or she right. had a bad, you know, she ate poorly the day before. She's going to ignore the signs of her body yeah. because of this stupid workout that says, this is when you train really hard. Yeah. And they're like, oh, it's based on my cycle. Therefore, it's the reality is it, it, none of it matters. How do you feel right now? Do you feel good? Do you have energy? Who cares what where, where you are in your cycle? 
That should that overrides anything else. That's what determines your intensity, your volume, and the kind of workout you do. That is this, more important than anything else. This reminds me of just, you know, how much we want to simplify everything. Like, yeah. We just want that so bad. You know, like just like the blood type diet, like that's oh, exactly man. what I was exactly what I was thinking about was the blood type diet. It's like how awesome would that be if we could literally pinpoint it to that and then these foods were just completely perfect for you and it worked out, you know, that way. And the thing is like there may be a general amount of data that shows yes. like, you know, women you respond well to this type of, of mapping in terms of like managing their stress and their workouts to, to, to go with their cycle. But it's just like, it breaks down. That's how these break it down. And it's, it just when you're, doesn't work. That's how, the, that's how these things get legs. perfectly. Yes. Just like the blood type. Yep. They, it gets legs because it does end up lining up for somebody. There's going to be a percentage of uh -huh. people that following this really works well for them. 80% of the time. It's like, oh my God, like if I train this way, it seems to match my energy levels. But to your point, Sal, it's so true. It's like, I don't care if it's the perfect time it, cycle wise for you to be training intensely. If you got shit sleep the night before, or you got terrible news, you lost your job the day before you going into that workout. I guarantee much throw that workout away. Also, I guarantee you'll feel way. It, it, can I tell you why this works for 80% of the people? It's not because they're training according to their cycle. It's because the workouts are phased. Yeah, <laughs> that's all it is. Yeah. Totally. The workouts are phased. That's the bottom line. They're doing different stuff at different times of the month. It has nothing to do with their cycle. Um, in fact, I'll tell you what. Like the truth be told, four years ago, I thought about perhaps developing a program with the, uh, around this. Why? Very easy to market. I can market yeah. the shit out of this, and I could sell women this all day long. But the problem was when I broke Our down the science. Team wanted this. Yeah, and when I broke down the science and went into it, I said. This isn't. This doesn't work. This makes no sense. It's always down to the individual. I mean, we phase our programs, but what do we always say? Listen to your body. Because here's the deal. Yes, your hormones go through cycles, but the complexity and the context of your life changes on a day-to-day -day basis. You know how you feel, your sleep, who you talk to, your diet. I would make emotional state. All that stuff changes regardless. I would make the case that what we know about HRT training would be more valuable information than this. You know why? Because it's individualized. That's what I mean. Because you're measuring That's your own I mean. heart so rate. So, like, I think I think yep. the same woman that has got good maybe results from from running a program like this would see just as much value, if not more value, yeah. from an HRT program where you basically HRT. are measuring your heart rate variability every single uh, morning and seeing where you're at. And it's if it's a green day you get after it if it's a yellow day you take it easy if it's a red day you take it off and following that i bet you'd see just as good of results better, if not better best. Yeah. next question is from ruse rooftop training when will you bring your wives in as guests oh, yeah. did, you know why i did I, katrina's uh yeah, you i had the story yeah i had day in the right? life and because i was with her yesterday all day i, I did like ask her maybe questions. i'll do that next time that yeah, was a good I, idea. yeah everybody really uh enjoyed that we're not we're not gonna bring our wives in as guests stop asking this question that's why i put it up there it's not <laughs> yeah. gonna happen <laughs> you want to bury it? this one yeah once and for all yeah but first of all they don't have any desire to be on the podcast i also you, you know what's funny yeah i actually they have zero desire i actually yeah. find it a little insulting too why? Well, because I take a little pride in like our craft now. Oh. <laughs> like they're just all of a sudden going to be good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, That's, I, I'm dead serious, no. bro. Fuck you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like this is what I've been doing for like, we've been doing this for eight well, years maybe now. maybe that's why we should do it. <laughs> now, see, now what happened? Look I don't want to make my wife look bad. I, no. I don't either. Listen, no, I you know, don't. you know why? You know, listen, what? you know how many people you guys we've had? How many? And the audience doesn't know this because they don't get to see all this stuff, but we've had people that do this shit for a living and you should see how fucking nervous. Mm -hmm. and, and scared they are and like shaky and fumble their words around and like, oh, we got to clip this or, oh, I don't want to do this. Like it is when you get the lights are on, you're talking in this and you uh, you start thinking about, oh my God, tens of thousands, maybe millions of people might hear this. And you're on camera now. Yeah, they just don't have just, any, they just don't have any desire. And also yeah, the whole, the whole podcast would be about us, which I feel kind of <laughs> insulting. Like, hey, honey, can you come on a podcast, which I know you don't want to do, yeah. and it makes you nervous, and we're going to put you on camera, yeah, and then they're going to ask us, and they're going to ask you questions about me. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I'm not going to waste my wife's time with that kind of stuff. Plus, mm -hmm. our wives, if they do, and what will, what will end up happening, I know this, is they'll all probably have a few drinks, loosen up a little bit, <laughs> talk shit, and then they're going to talk. Hell That's shit. why everybody <laughs> wants it. <though. laughs> yeah, That's yeah. why everybody wants it. Everybody wants to hear all the shit talking. I just think that I, I mean, again, you think, I think that it's you, you're, you people are underestimating how nerve wracking it is to sit yeah. in these chairs. I don't, it's it, go. And if you underestimate, go back and listen to episode three of us. <laughs>
<laughs> and, the, and we went into this willingly to do it and practicing it and trying and talking yeah. about a subject right. that all of us are very well versed and have a lot of experience and love talking about. So imagine having three three wives who don't want to talk about. They're not really into it. They've never done anything like this. And then you're gonna ask them questions about us. We, yeah. We're not interested in you. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about Justin yeah, Courtney. Or well, even me, you should have seen ridiculous. Kate. So th again, you don't get to see this because I did like. I, I post like, you know, ask Katrina anything. And then I was sitting there with lunch and I'd ask her, you should have seen how hard it was to get her to, with all the time not being recorded, her trying to answer these questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, honey, you can't say it that way. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> like I had to coach her <laughs> on how to do that. You well, know what I'm saying? She said, <laughs> it's just, just, I'm like, really? Was she trying to talk shit? What was she saying? Not even, she wasn't even doing that. Just it was like just like, she didn't know how to, she didn't know how to answer like half of it. I'm like, you're overthinking it. For, I'm like, just, our wives are badasses yeah. at what they do. And, and that's just the bottom line. Yeah. They're right. asking them to come on here. It's like, I know that well, they would say yes, because they're so, we have the most supportive wives in the world like super Absolutely. supportive and they they would do it if we really asked them to but they don't want to the move is for you guys to do and i think that when i did the uh wine and weed and wife thing that was cool and that was like a chill you know her and cool? i together if we did like a all of us together not on a podcast maybe one that's like private yes where we have a private audience like a lounge or, or something yeah and then we're all just hanging out and it's not a part of that's like the, the move pump. that's what i was thinking more of the live event come to a live event you know a lot of times our wives will be there uh and just you know introduce yourself i think yeah. that's the best way to do it other than just trying to get them to um come on here and 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 try and create yeah, I really a whole think, podcast i really think it would bomb I think it would bomb. Really? Dude. Yes. I 100% think it would know, bomb. Man. I do not think the audience would get what they think they want from it, which would be this funny, talk shit about Justin, talk shit about Adam, talk yeah. shit about Sal, have some good, like, like theoretically, it sounds like it would be a, it would, but I'm telling you right now, they they would get in these chairs. Well, I know they, don't, they, they don't want to. How many times have I brought yes, it up? Yes, exactly. And my wife's like, no, and they I don't, don't want, want to do And imagine, imagine yeah. being put in these chairs exactly. and you don't want to. We willingly sat in these chairs and did this shit and decided to go through the growing pains of figuring it out. Like, there's, it's not going to pan out the way- I remember I brought it up to, to Jessica a while ago and she's like, no, please don't make me do that. <laughs> she's yeah. like, I'll do it if you Anything need me to. That. But please don't make me get on the, you know, do that. Like, all right. Yeah, I'm Katrina good. was the same way. She's like, no, I'm good. She's like, I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> no, thank you. It's so. a good time. Yeah. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. You can find Adam on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets, at the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.